Hello everybody, welcome to this atelier on Power BI. Um, so we will start in a few minutes. We just wait for everyone to join this atelier and we will start um, an atelier about Power BI. First of all, the business intelligence. What is the business intelligence? And then we will see a demonstration of Power BI tool from connection to the data sources to um, the creation of a dashboard using visualizations from the tool. I hope you see well my screen. Um, I see everyone, Celia, Thibault, Katia in the chat. Hello, everybody. Uh, so let's start. I think it should work. Uh, please tell me if something goes wrong. Just uh, you, you can say it to me in the chat. So um, we'll talk about Power BI, as I told you. Uh, so a quick overview. It will be very easy. First of all, we will see what is the business intelligence and what why it is important uh, in a company. And then we make a demonstration of the Power BI tool. So the business intelligence, what is it? The business intelligence, it's um, a strategy that we will uh, put in place in, um, in a company to use the data um, for making the best decisions uh, for the company. But it's not only taking decisions based on data, it's all the strategy that we will uh, use to collect the data because it can be from different data sources. It can be uh, data from your clients, from your customers, from your um, suppliers, from your stocks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So very different kinds of data. We will have to collect the data to process it because, of course, in the data, I mean, many times you have uh, some duplicates, some missing values, um, um, something like that. So you have to to clean your data every time. So it's it's a part of the business intelligence. Then the job of the data analyst will be to analyze this data. And finally, to create graphs to take decisions based on this data. All this strategy is the business intelligence. Um, another important key point of the business intelligence is that we will have to put in place key, um, key elements, like what we call KPI, key performance influencers. Um, to use facts and figures as a compass for all decisions. And finally, all of this process, all of this strategy has to be automated. Of course, uh, if the data analyst creates a dashboard based on the data uh, in 2023, okay, on the stocks, for example, of course, the objective is that in 2024, the same data analyst doesn't have to create another dashboard, okay, the same da dashboard will be uh, refreshed every time with the data in 2023, 2024, etc., etc. Okay, so this process of automation, of refreshing of the dashboards, uh, of the data sets and of the dashboards is a part also of the business intelligence. That's why um, uh, tools like Power Automate or Make are automation tools and are tools that can be part of the business intelligence. Today, we won't see Power Automate or uh, Make. We will see another tool that is Power BI, and we will see why it's a very good uh, tool for the business intelligence. So this BI, business intelligence, um, can be broken into four main stages. First of all, connection to data sources. And as I told you, these data sources can be very different. Um, it could be an Excel file uh, like, or a flat file, like a CSV file or JSON file, something like that. It could be an, a SQL database. It could be uh, from big data. It could be many, many different things, social networks, etc., etc. So, of course, because of this priority of uh, data sources, we need a second phase, a second stage that is named ETL. What is ETL? Extract, transform, and load, and we will see why this part is very important. Then we have the data warehouse uh, stage, and finally 
the creation of, re of reports. So let's detail each one of these stages. First of all, as I told you, the data sources. Um, so a BI tool like Power BI or Tableau or Looker Studio um, has to be able to connect to many different data sources um, like FAT files, SQL data, uh, database, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to 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 help us for our um, for our creation of the of dashboards. Then, once we have been connected to data sources, we need an ETL phase. So, what is ETL? As I told you, it's extract, transform, and load. So, extract why? Because we will get we will extract the information from the data sources. Then we have to transform it because in many cases we have duplicates, we have uh, we have to clean the data. Okay, so this transform stage is very, very important. It's the most important phase of the ETL. Okay, so we will remove the duplicates, remove the missing values, um, uh, maybe transform the data, or see the, 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 the format of the data during this ETL phase. And finally, once our data are uh, have all the same format in tables, for example, we will be able to load these tables in a data warehouse. So what is a data warehouse? It's like a huge database, okay, a SQL database, where our data is uh, stored, okay, as a structured data. We only have um, structured data in our data warehouse, okay? So every time the ETL phase is before the loading into the data warehouse so that all the data into the data warehouse is structured, clean, and ready for uh, a machine learning step, for example, for the data scientist or an analysis with the data analyst. There is a question from Frédéric, a very good question. Um, if there are other ETL tools, I can show you um, a question from Frederick. If there are other ETL tools than Power Query, so Power Query it's the the ETL tool used in Power BI. Okay, but of course there are many other ETL tools. Um, for example, Talent. Okay, Talent is a free uh, ETL that you can um, an open data ETL uh, that is very easy to learn because as Power Query, um, it's an ETL, no code. Okay, you don't need code to transform your data. If you prefer code, you can just uh, use Python, for example, with the library Pandas as an ETL because you're able with Pandas to connect to CS CSV file, for example, to uh, transform your data into the data frame and then to load it into a SQL database like a data warehouse. So of course, there are many different other ETL tools than Power Query. Once we have loaded our data into the data warehouse, we are ready for the last part, the last two, two stages, that is reporting and the diffusion. Okay, so the, this reporting, it's a creation uh, by the data analyst or the business analyst of a report, a dashboard, in which you will find um, um, key figures, okay, or graphs to explain your data, okay, because having data into a table, it's very good, but it's very difficult to understand. So the objective of uh, data analyst or business analyst, uh, analyst is to translate this um, data from a table to graphs to, so that uh, people of the company can make decisions based on these graphs, okay, to interpret this data. So now let's see the Power BI tool. That is a very good tool of, uh, of business intelligence. Why? Because um, it enables us to perform all this data in the same tool. It's not the case, for example, of Looker Studio. Looker Studio is another, Power, um, another BI tool, another business intelligence tool. But with, with Looker Studio, you don't have an ETL integrated into Looker Studio. So you can only connect to data sources and make the reporting phase. Okay. Whereas with Power BI, you can connect to data sources. You have an integrated ETL 
named Power Query. Then you can load your data into Power BI and finally make the report. So let's see that together in a demonstration of Power BI. So the tool that I will use is named, it's opening, is named Power BI Desktop. So it's the desktop version of Power BI. Okay, there are two versions of Power BI. The first one that I will use today is Power BI Desktop. It's free. Okay, there it is. It's free. Okay, and it's um, perfect for the training of the tool because it will enable us. It will enable us. Sorry, to perform all the tasks except the diffusion. OK, so you can connect to data sources, make your ETL phase, uh, load the data into a data warehouse, and create create your report. But with Power BI Desktop, you are not able to diffuse your data, Okay, to share your, your, your data sets or your dashboards. So that's why there is a second version of Power BI that is named Power BI Service. OK, and you see here with this button, Publish, if I have a Power BI service license that is not free, of course. Um, I would be able to create my dashboard and then to publish it into the cloud, okay, to share my data sets or my dashboards. Uh, Julien, a question from Julien, is Power BI on Linux too? That's a very good question um, because Power BI is, of course, uh, available on Microsoft, okay. Um, uh, on Windows, uh, sorry, but also on, on Linux. But it's not able, you're not able to use Power BI Desktop on Mac, Mac OS, okay? But in a few months or years, um, the objective of Microsoft is to cancel Power BI Desktop, okay? And to have everything on Power BI service, so it will be on your uh, browser on Google Chrome or or uh, Internet Explorer, etc., etc. So you will be able uh, to use Power BI service, of course, on Linux, Mac OS, or uh, Windows uh, computers. Perfect. So here is Power BI Desktop. You have mainly three different tabs on Power BI Desktop. First one, the report view. Okay, what is the report view? It's where at the end, uh, we will have our graphs and the dashboard. And you can see here in visualizations, all the different graphs, all the, the different charts that already exists in Power BI. Second view, it's the table view. Uh, for the moment, we don't have any data, but, but once I will be connected to data here, on this view, I will be able to see my, da my data in a table as, for example, a data frame on, on, uh, on Python. And finally, the model view here, uh, for those who know SQL, for example, SQL databases, it's the model view. It's where we'll see the relationships between the different tables that we will have imported. But of course, all of it, all of these views needs before to be connected to data. That's what, that's why, that's what we will do now with get data we will connect to all data there's a question from zara what do you recommend for mac users and um, for mac users i recommend um another another very good bi tool that is tableau tableau uh, why tableau because i could recommend for example looker studio but looker studio as i told you uh doesn't enable you to perform all this, but all, only the reporting phase. Whereas Tableau enables you to perform all the different stages of the business intelligence and is available on macOS. Okay, so let's go to get data. And here we click on more just to show you. Yes, to show you, you can see that all here, all these tools are the tools um, to which Power BI is able to connect. Okay, so you, you can connect to 
Excel sheets, for example, uh, to JSON files, etc. But also SQL uh, databases and many, many different things like um, social networks, Azure, etc., etc. So you see that you have many, many different connectors on Power BI. So even if you have a very specific tool in your company, there are many chances that it already exists a connector between Power BI and your tool. Okay. Here we will connect to a tool named Snowflake. So what is Snowflake? It's um, um, what is Snowflake? It's um, a data war data warehousing tool. Okay. Uh, so we connect to data from Snowflake. So let's go connect. It will ask my server, of course. So I will put it here and here. Okay. It takes a bit of time. Perfect. And now I can see here all the different databases that already exists on, on Snowflake. Okay. Um, for the demonstration today, we will work with um, a data set with one, two, three, four, five, six different tables about the Olympic Games. Okay. So you see, we, you, we have, you have, we, sorry, you have a first table about assets. Okay. So it's here you can find in these tables in this table all the athletes that uh, um, that participate to the Olympic Games uh, from 1896 to uh, 2060. Okay, all the athletes in the table geography you have the city and the country where the games was were organized, the different teams uh, or, or countries that participate to the Olympic Games. The different results. So these athletes during these Olympic Games in this sport obtain or didn't obtain a medal. Okay, bronze, gold, silver. And finally, sports. The different events and the different sports that were uh, organized during this Olympic Games. Okay. So let's go. We will connect to all these tables, and the objective will be to perform a, uh, a business intelligence strategy to obtain graphs and so to obtain information from these tables. So let's go. I will connect to each one of these. And here I have two ways to connect to it. I can click on load or on transform data. If I click on load, it means that I will skip the ETL stage. OK, so load, I, I, I go from data sources and load into the data warehouse okay i skip this stage so i can do it but i will do it if i'm sure that in my tables here uh, i don't have any problems so if my all my tables are clean okay whereas it's not the case just to show you here on the table sport you see the name of the columns is event and sports and the first row events and sports so here we have already a problem and of course there are many different problems in our tables okay so we need to before performing the loading into the data warehouse and the reporting phase that's why we have another button that is transform data and if i click on transform data it will open a new window uh, named power query that is the etl from power bi before opening this window, it asks me the way I want to connect to my data. Uh, do I want an import connection or a direct query connection? So what is the difference? In a direct query connection, uh, if I click, if I choose this one, I will be connected live to my to my data. Okay. What does that mean? It means that um, on Snowflake, my da my data. Um, currently are on Snowflake, OK? Uh, if I'm connected, connected uh, with direct query mode, if someone during this, um, this, uh, this meeting here, if someone from my company changes something 
on Snowflake, I will see this modification on Power BI because I'm connected live to my data. Okay, so DiQuery enables us to be live connected to the data. Whereas with the import mode, um, if I if I choose the import mode, Power BI will make a copy of the tables from Snowflake into Power BI. So if someone makes a modification on Snowflake, me, I will see a copy of an older version. So of course, I won't see the modification on Power BI. Okay, so that's the difference between these two modes. So if I say that, of course, we 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 could say that the query is much better than the import mode because we are live connected to the data. But the problem of the direct query mode is that because you're connected live to the net, to the data, it means that every time you want to display something, for example, a graph, Power BI will will check into the source if there is no modification and then come back to display the graph. And this um, um, this uh, way uh, from Power BI takes a bit of time, okay? So the direct query mode is much, much longer than the import mode. That's why me here for the demonstration, I will use the import mode, okay? So let's go. I will connect um, with the import mode to my data and it opens a new window, okay? Named Power Query Editor. So the Power Query Editor is the ETL integrated into Power BI. And as Power BI is a low code tool, Power Query is also a low code tool. What does that mean? It means that to perform our transformation, we won't need any uh, code. Okay. We will just click on buttons for the transformations. Okay. So let's go. Let's start, for example, with this table, geography. And we will see all the different steps to perform a transformation of a table. So first of all, first thing to do is to check the name, the name of the table and the name of the currents. Okay. So here, the name of the table is geography. It's quite good. And the name of the current, game, city, and country. But you see, on the first row, we also have game, city, and country. So of course, we don't need to have the information on the title of the columns and on the first row. Okay. So the best thing to do here would be to take the first row and to put it as the title of uh, the header of the columns. Okay. We could use Python with a code to do this. Okay. But as I told you, poor query is a no code tool. So it should exist a button on Power Query that will enable, enable us to do it. And if I go to transform, you see here, there is a button, use first row as headers. That's exactly what we want. We will take the first row, game, city, and country, and put it as a header. And of course, it will remove the first row. So if I click here, you see, I have made my uh, modification. Now I have I have not my um, my first row anymore, and the title of my the header of my columns are games, city, and country. So just by clicking on the button, I made the transformation. Um, Jose, there's a question. The direct query causes load on data source if every client refresh a chart or a table. Indeed, Jose, every time. Your, you, you, you refresh a, a chart or a table, it will have to go back to the source. And of course, it's a time of loading uh, from the source to Power BI. Exactly. That's why I recommend that if you don't need uh, a live, 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 live um, uh, connection to the data, I recommend you to use the import mode. Because with the import mode, you can, um, you can, uh, you can program that every 30 minutes, your data sets refresh. Okay, so every 30 minutes, it will go back to the source and 
uh, if there are any modification, just refresh. So with the import mode, you are not live connected to the data, but you have 30 minutes late. Okay. So in many cases, it's not a big deal to have uh, to to be 30 minutes late. Okay. If you really need a live connection, in this case, I will recommend the the direct query mode. Direct query mode. Okay. So um, I was um, I was transforming the the geography table. Okay, so first of all, the name of the columns. Uh, you see, when I did this, I'm not sure if you, you saw it, but here something happened. Okay, when I made my transformation, something happened here. In this uh, tab, query settings, the applied steps, it may, may be one of the most important things in Power BI. Uh, you can find here all the steps that you already applied on your table. So first of all, the source, where did you find the table? It's on Snowflake, thanks to this server. Okay. Then, when you connect it to it, we obtained this table. Okay. And we still have, you remember at this step, we had game, city, and country, and the first row, game, city, and country. So, why is it interesting apply steps? Because every time, every time, sorry, you can come back to a prev previous version of your table. Okay. Then, we clicked on use first was headers. It created a step named promoted header. And you see after this step, we have game city and country here, and we don't have the first row anymore. Okay. So very, very interesting the apply steps here because um, for two main reasons. First of all, um, if you have maybe, I don't know, 50, 50 uh, steps, okay, you have a very uh, dirty uh, data. You have many, many steps to clean the data, and you have 50 steps. Okay, At the end, you see that in the current country, for example, you have errors. It's very difficult with 50 steps to know at which step, oh, yes, to know which step created the errors. Okay, That's why with the applied steps, you just have to go step by step and see, OK, here there is no error. Here, there is an error. So it means that this step created the error. Okay, And another way to use this, uh, this applied steps, uh, imagine here, um, right click on country, OK, and remove. I remove the column country, OK? And 10 minutes later, I come back and, oh, no, it was not a good idea to, to, to remove the column country. I wish I could um, restore it. If we were on uh, Python with pandas, for example, if you drop a column, you can come back. Okay, here on Power BI, you just have to go back to the step before, and the column country is still here, and you just have to click here on the cross. And I, I uh, removed the step that removed the column country. Okay, and I go back to a version of my um, of my data set where the current country still exists. To find this query settings, if it's, um, if it's not um, available for you, you can find it in, in the tab view here. You see query settings. For me, I, um, I able it uh, every time because it's very inter interesting. In the table view, you also have column quality. What is column quality? You see here uh, in the table game, in the column games, for example, uh, Power BI tells me that 100% of the values are valid, 0% error, 0% empty. Okay. This information is here thanks to column quality. Okay. If I unlock it, I don't have it. If I lock it, I, I still have it. Okay. So, li like the query settings, I recommend that you always lock the column quality. Because it's very interesting to know uh, if you have errors or empty values in your columns. Be careful. Um, here, it tells me that 100% of my values are valid. Be careful. Um, it's only, you can see it here, on the top 1,000 rows. 
So here it's not a problem because in this table, I only have 51 rows, so no problem. But imagine, for example, here on, in the table athletes, I have more than uh, 1,000 1, rows, okay? So be careful. Um, by default, Power BI will only calculate the valid error and empty values on the top 1,000 rows. Why? Because uh, Power BI, you can use it for data set with thousands rows, but also for millions or billions rows, okay? So if every time Power BI needed to calculate the valid error or empty values for billions of rows, it would be very, very long, okay? Uh, and the objective of a tool like Power BI is that it's interactive, so it's very quick for the execution, okay? So my recommendation is that you you let it on top 1,000, okay? And at the end, when you have uh, finished your transformation of your table, you can click here and ask Power BI to do it on the entire data set. So that at the end, you're sure that you didn't miss uh, um, 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 an error or, the, or an empty value in the, the, the data set, okay? So here I come back to 1,000 rows. Uh, to finish on the tab view, you also have the column distribution. That is interesting because you can see uh, the distribution of your variables. But I don't really use it because when I need some information on the on the column, for example, the column country, I don't use the column distribution. I use the column profile because here uh, column profile is quite uh, a fusion of column quality and column distribution with many many information. So you have the distribution of your column. We can see that the United States is the country that organized the most the Olympic Games, then France, Greece, etc. And you have some statistics on your uh, column. So the number of values, if there are errors or empty values, the number of distinct values, the number of unique values, etc., etc. Et okay. So if you need some information on your on the on the column, I recommend that you go to the View tab and click on column profile. And then don't forget to click back on it, whereas you, you will keep this, uh, this, um, this tab and it takes too much place for me. So I unlock it. Perfect. Um, so let's come back to the transformation of my table. Um, I checked the name of the table and the name of the columns. It's OK now. Second thing to do is to check if there are no uh rows or columns that we don't need so if we don't need a column we can drop it we don't need to to keep a drop uh so, sorry to keep a column if we don't need the information that is inside okay here we need all the, the columns because uh the the, um, the date of the olympic games it's it's important and the city and the country where we want where the, the olympic Games takes place it's also important if we want for example to 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 create a map at the end. Um, next, um, next objective is to check the type of the columns. What is the type of a column? You see here, on the left of the name of a column here, you have a button with A, B, C. Okay, and if I click on it, I can see all the different types that can, that can, that I can give to a column. So here you see games contains texts, okay, 1896 summer, 18, uh, 19 summer, 194 summer, etc., etc. So Power BI understood that the text, the, the, the type of the column should be text, okay? But we could have different other types, like decimal number. If we only had um, decimal values in this column, we could put here, the type decimal number, whole number, dates or time, duration, text, true or false, etc., etc. It's very important to have the correct type here. For example, just to show you, if I force this column to be to to have the type decimal number, for example, what will I obtain? Add new step. I obtain only errors. Why? Because Power BI tried to change the value 1896 summer, that is obviously 
text into a decimal number. And of course, it makes no sense. So for Power BI, it obtains an error. OK? But of course, if I go back to the previous step, I don't have the error, thanks to the applied steps. So I just click on the cross here and go back to my previous version of the table without any errors. Um, perfect. So here, games, it's text. Perfect. City, it's also text. Perfect. And country, it's also text. So in this table, in this yes, in this table, we only have columns with the type text. But in the other tables, you will see that we will have different um, things. Perfect. And the last thing to do is to check if there are any um, any uh, errors in our data. So I just did it, but just to come back here, 100% valid, here and here, 100% valid. So no missing values and no errors in our data. But we can have um, human errors. What do I call human errors? Let, let's go here, for example. You see in the column city, um, the first value is Athena. 1896 in Greece, Athena organized the Olympic Games. Whereas uh, we don't, uh, the, the capital of Greece is not Athena, it's Athens. Okay, Athena is just the, the goddess. Uh, so here it's a mistake. Of course, Power BI don't see the mistake because for Power BI, an error, it's like um, you put a decimal number, whereas, whereas it was a text. But Athena or Athens, Power BI doesn't know the difference. Okay, So here, it's maybe the most difficult uh, errors to find um, because Power BI can't help you. How to deal with this type of errors? You see here Athena, and we have it too here. Okay. Um, there is a button, if I right click on the column, named replace values. What is this button? It will, so replace values. It asks me which, which value I want to find in the column. So I will find Athena. Okay. So it will find all the values in my column where I have the word Athena. Okay. And then I will replace all this Athena by another word. OK, and what is this other, other words? It's Athens. If I click on OK, it added a new step. OK, and at the step before, we had, we had Athena. At the step after, we have Athens. OK, so here is the way to replace some values. You can replace uh, missing values or uh, mistakes in your data, in your, in your column, thanks to the button replace values. Perfect. So now the geography table is clean. OK, but the ETL phase is not only cleaning of a table. It's also a way to um, improve it for the modernization and for the visualization. I'll give you an example. Imagine here with this table, uh, I want to um to make a graph okay a, a map where i print on the map only the olympic games that organized summer olympic games okay with this data it's not easy why because i don't have a column with the season okay it would be very interesting to have here a column named season where we can find only summer or winter because us, we have a column where we have both the date, so I mean the year, and the, the season. Okay. So a good way to improve our table would be um, to add here two new columns, a first one named year with here 1896, 1900, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and another column named season with summer, 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 or winter, depending on what we have here. OK? It would be very much easier for the end for the creation of graphs. Uh, so how to do this? Before that, um, Julien, here you were lucky. Athena wasn't the first line. What's the good habit of you have thousands of rows, and Athena would be on the rows 555, 789, etc. Indeed, you're right, Julian. 
Altina were on the was sorry on the on the first row, so I, I found it. You're right. If um, you have it in other values, uh, in Power Query it will be very difficult to find it. The best way to find it will be after during your your um, your graphs etc. You will find maybe uh, on your map, of course, uh, Power BI will won't understand what is Athena because it will uh, check a city named Athena and it won't find it. So at this moment, you will obtain an error or you won't have um, values on Athens. So you, you could understand that it's weird and you will come back at this moment to your data. But there is no good habit to have for this because it's very difficult to find um, this type of errors in your data. Um, okay, so my objective now is to create two new columns uh, named year and season, where I just print only the year and only the season. So for that, I will go to add column, okay? And I will show you like a magic button in Power BI named column from examples. Okay, so what is this type of button i will create a new column then year okay and this button column from examples i will just give one or several examples to power bi of what i want and it will understand for all the other values i give you i, I just show you so for example for the first line for the first row i want the year okay so here i want 1896 so I will tell to Python to Power BI, I want 1896. Enter, and now Power BI understood that for the second row I wanted 1900, etc., etc. So it's like a magic button because with only one or two examples, it understands what I want for every values. Okay, and now it created my new column with only the years and be careful here we only have years in the data okay years it's whole numbers whereas poor bi said it was text so here i just have to say whole number why is it important because if i want to to make some calculations with this uh years for example differences of years or something like that if it's text you can't make some calculation okay it, do, it do, doesn't make sense whereas now that it's um a whole number this one is a whole number etc i can make some addition multiplication etc with my years uh okay and now let's create season so new column from example season here and for the first row for example i want to find summer Perfect, and it understands for all the rows that I want only the season. Okay, and now I have a table that is ready that is ready for the data visualization. Why? Because it's clean. Okay, uh, we don't have any missing values, any errors, and we have the best uh, columns for the visualizations, like here and season. Perfect. So now let's do the same thing for all the different tables. So let's go to athletes uh, and let's do the same steps. So first of all, the name of the, the column of the table, it's okay. The name of the column, athlete ID, name, birth, sex, height, weight, energy. Perfect. No problem. Then is there any column or row that we want to drop? It's not the case here because it's very interesting to have all this information on this on the athletes. Then the name of the, the sorry the type of the columns, athlete ID here. We only have whole numbers, whereas Power BI told us it was decimal number. Of course, we will tell tell him no. It's a whole number. Name, it's text. Perfect. Birth, birth. Uh, Power BI said it's uh, ABC, so it's text. Whereas a uh, birth date, it could be very interesting to have a date. So we, we tell to, to Power BI, 
it's a date. Sex, uh, male or female, it's a text, perfect. Hates, it's only whole number. Weights, indeed, we have uh, 76.5, etc. So it's, of course, decimal number. And finally, NOC, it's only text. Perfect. A uh, question for, from Jose. Is it a good idea to create a new dimension tables, tables or with cities and countries, make unique and create index and populate the index in the main data table? Or is it better to maintain everything in one table? Oh, okay. I see the, the question from Jose. Jose um, says we could create from this, because here you see, for example, Greece um, or the United States or France repeats many different times, okay? So the question from Jose, we could create a new table named uh, countries where we have unique values for the country, okay? And then we, we create an ID that will make the, um, the link between the two tables. Jose, um, in terms of modelization, it could be, it works, no problem. But you will see at the end, I will come back on it later, um, in Power BI, we try to reduce the number of join, the number of merge. Okay, it means that uh, um, th this type of transformation would oblige us to add some 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 join in the visualization. And when you have to 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 make some join in the visualization, it reduces the performance of the model. But I will come back on it later with a, when I will do the modernization. Um, yes, Salma, you, you, you're right. We, we can do this with, with an ETL. You, you're right, but um, but um, it it wouldn't be a good idea for the for the use of Power BI. Exactly, Mahmoud. You're right. The denormalization de of the tables uh, is important for the visualization because it's uh, it's it's better for the performance uh, of the model. Okay, so we were on athletes, sorry. Um, the type of the columns, okay, perfect. Now, is there any missing values or uh, errors in the data? Um, I would just check it on the entire da data set. And here you see, it takes a few time. Why? Because we have much more than 1000 rows in our data. So just to do it on, I think 100,000 rows, it's a bit longer. So imagine on millions or billions of rows. It's done now, and 100% of the values are valid. So that's perfect. Can we change a type of economy year from whole number to year? Um, there is no type year, um, Katya. We have the type date. Maybe that was your question. But here, just to show you, so here I have a year, okay, and the, the, the type is whole number. If I change it to time, uh, sorry, to date, it asks for a, a real date. So with a day, a month, and a year. So that's what that that's what we wanted. We only wanted the year. So we keep we will keep the year in a in a whole number format. Okay, so now the, the table athletes. Perfect, it's ready because uh, we have made the transformation. Now I will be a bit quicker on the other tables because it will be quite the same uh, transformations. So here the name of the column is okay. Uh, no, we have here NOC team. So transform, use first was headers. Any missing values or errors? No, perfect. Uh, and the, the type ABC, ABC. Uh, in the current, in the table sports, the same thing. We have to use use first was headers. The here it's text, here it's text, and any missing values or problems? No. Okay, perfect. You see, I dealt I dealt with athletes, geography, NOC team, and sports, and I just let result and result football on the left. Okay, and on the side. Why? Because I make a difference a difference between the tables. Uh, athlete, geography, university, team, and sports, and 
these two tables. These two tables, results and result football, are what we call fact tables. What is a fact table? It's a table where you find uh, where each row corresponds to some um, to an important event. Um, indeed, in the table results, this row indicates that this athlete during this Olympic Games in this sport obtained or didn't obtain a medal. Okay, and then all the other tables will describe my facts. It means that, for example, this athlete, if I want to now, I, I know that he didn't obtain a medal uh, in basketball in 1992. Okay, perfect. But now, can I have more information on this athlete? For that, I will go to the table athlete. And in the table athlete, I know now that this, um, this athlete was born in 1968, was a male, uh, this height, etc., etc. Okay, so results and result football are tables, are fact tables. It means that um, they are the center of our um, analysis, analysis. Okay, and all of or all other tables, sports, NOC team, geography, and athletes are what we call um, dimension tables. It means that they will describe the fact. Okay, but for the Transformation, it doesn't really make difference. We will make the, the same transformation. So let's go. Uh, first of all, the name of the table, results, perfect. The name of the columns, it's okay. Uh, then is there any column or row that we want to drop? Here, there is a column that we want to drop. I will ask you, maybe, uh, maybe someone will have the, the answer. There is a column here in this table in the table results that we don't need. Do you know which one is it? Which one it is? You can answer, of course, in the chat. That's not obvious. Uh, Mahmoud Salem said games. Um, no, Mahmoud, it's not games. Perfect, Flo, Flo said name. Um, games, games here, Mahmoud, is important. Is important. Why? Because uh, thanks to games, we can put, we can make a link between the table results and the table geography. Because we, in both of these tables, we have the same column games. Whereas um, Flo Didier said name and Katia same athlete ID. Indeed, these two columns are redundant. Why? Because if I go to athletes, I have an athlete ID, and each athlete ID corresponds to an athlete, so to a name. Okay. And if I go to results, I also have an athlete ID and a name. And here is the, the problem, because one of this one should, re, sh sh should be uh, removed. Okay. And why we, do we choose to remove name and not athlete ID? Because a name could be... Um, uh, redundant. It means that two different athletes could have the same name, whereas an athlete ID is um, unique, of course, it's the, it's the definition of an ID. So here, to make the link between the table results and the table athletes, we will use the athlete ID. And because in the, the, athlete, in the, current, in the table athlete, we already have the name, we don't need to still have it in the table results. So here we will remove the column name. Okay. Then the types of the columns. Athlete ID, it's a whole number. Games, it's of course text, even it's text. And medal, you can see bronze, gold, silver, it's also text. Then is there any missing values or errors in our data? Of course, you see here in the column medal, we have 12% of valid data and 88% of empty values. Uh, so the question he here is, should we remove all the empty values? Of course, no. What, uh, why do we have these empty values? It's because, unfortunately, um, most of the athletes that participate to the Olympic Games don't obtain medals. 
Okay? Because in this column, we have bronze, silver, gold, or missing values. The missing values means mean that the, 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 the obtained didn't win, didn't win a medal. But we won't let these missing values. The best way here would be to replace the missing values by a value indicating that they, they didn't obtain a medal. Like, for example, so replace values. Sorry. Right click. Oh, what happened? Oh, yeah. There is a problem. It doesn't answer anymore. It's weird. I will just close it and reopen it. Sorry. Sorry for that. Um, is there any question? No. Yes, Halid, exactly. They didn't win the medal. You're right. That's why we have missing values in our data. So I come back to it. Just to show you here, what did I do? Uh, there was a problem, so I I, I closed uh, Power Query. Okay, So I loaded my data into Power BI. But I will co go back to Power Query because it wasn't uh, finished, thanks to the button Transform Data. So I was on Results. Right click on the column medal, replace values. It's doing the same. Oh, okay. And the value to found, find here is null. Okay. So all the null here, we will replace it by no medal, for example, just to, to, to be sure that this athlete didn't obtain a medal. And now in our, in our column, we only have valid values, of course, and the four different values that are possible that are, or sorry, no medal, bronze, silver, and gold. Okay. And the table result football is quite the same. Okay, we have quite the same thing. Just to, to tell you, uh, in, a, in the table, we, we, we had all the results. And in another, another table named result football, we had only the, the result concerning uh, the football. Okay, football, men's football. Okay. Um, so let's make the same transformations. Um, is there any column that we want to drop? Of course, the same name. Name. The type of the columns here, whole number. Here it's text, here it's text, and here it's text, but we have to replace the new by no middle. Exactly the same transformation. Uh, sorry, new, no middle. Perfect. And now, maybe it's a question that you are asking. Why do we have some results in the table name results and some other results in the column name in the table name result football. And you're right, we don't need two different tables for the same type of information. Okay, That's why in Power BI, we have a button named App and Queries. What is App and Queries? It's a button that will enable us to merge, yes, to merge our tables by taking the rows of the table result football and add it at the end of the rows of results. Okay, so this row, this row, this row, etc., will be added at the end of this table. Okay, and if we do it, we will have only one table named results where we will find all the results. Okay, so I go to the table results, I will click on open queries. Here, how many tables do I want to uh, concatenate? Only two tables, results and result football. And the table to happen is result football. I click on OK. And it worked, but be careful. You see here in athlete ID and in footballer ID, it creating some missing value. Why? Because um, you see that in the table result football, the name of this column is footballer ID. Whereas in result, it was on, it was athlete ID, and for a BI, check the name of the columns. If they have the same name, it adds at the end of the, the same column. But if two columns 
have different names, it will create a new column with, with many uh, missing values. Okay. So the best way to do it here is to replace footballer ID by athlete, athlete ID. Perfect. And now if I go back to results, you see I don't have my column footballer ID anymore. And I, don't, I, I have all the values in the table results. Perfect. And, that, and maybe the last thing I want to show you, um, let's go back to geography. Uh, using geography, I have the city, I have the country. It could be very interesting also to have the continent, to, to see which continent uh, organized the most the Olympic Games. For example, I don't know if you know it, but Africa never organized the Olympic Games. It could be interesting to have this information. So to have it, we need a column with the continent. Okay. Here, we only have 51 values, so we could create a, a column uh, by ourselves, and we would, we would add Greece, Europe, France, Europe, United States, America, etc., etc. But it would be quite long. So I will show you a way to add some information. Here in New Source, we can click on Web. It means that we can uh, import inf uh, data from Excel sheets, etc., but also from the web from a, a, a website. So I will click on it. And just to show you, I found a website, this website, where we have this table with each country in the world related to its continent. Okay, so that's very interesting because of course we can we could find Greece, France, etc. with the, the, the continents associated. Okay, so I will take the URL of this website and connect to this URL. Perfect. Now, uh, Pura BI will, will, will ask me um, which table I want to connect because there are many different tables on, on my website. So I think it's this one. Perfect, yes. Country or area, and in the last table, a column, the continent associated. So perfect, I will choose this one. Okay. It will create a new table named countries or areas. And let's go. Let's do the same transformation. So the name of the, of the table, continent. The name of the columns um, here, uh, I mean, and oh, this one, this one, this one, and this one, we don't need them. We only need the country and the continent associated. So we remove this current. And here we would call it country. Perfect. It's a bit more clean. Now, with that, we are able to go back to geography and just add the correct continent at the end here. So Greece, it should be Europe. France, it should be Europe. United States, it should be America, etc., etc. How do we do it? Uh, we will use before we used the append queries, now we will use the merge queries. The merge queries, it's a button that enables us to take a, a column from a table and add it at the end of another table. So here, we will take the, the, the column continent from this table and add it at the end of the table geography. But of course, it's important to have the the correct continent, so Greece, it will be uh, uh, Europe, France, it will be, it will be Europe, etc., etc. So let's do this. Uh, I go to the target table, geography. I click on merge queries. And it asks me which table I want to add. So I will add continents, okay? And here, it will ask me which is the key. Which is the what, what is the key? Which which column is the key between the two tables? The key is the current country. Why? Because to know here that I have to 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 add Europe, it's because the 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 country here is Greece and Greece is in Europe. Okay. So here country and here country. Here privacy levels. It's because I uh, it's from a website. It's not important. 
You see, I, I tend to, 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 to pour BI by using the country, you can find which value to put here. Okay, how, how, to, how to do it? Um, Power BI will see here is Greece. So it will go to this table. It will find the value Greece. And just on the, on the right side of Greece, we have Europe. So it will put the value here, Europe. Okay. And now when you merge two tables, um, maybe you know it, there are different ways to merge tables. You have, first of all, the left join. So what is the left join? Um, the left join will keep all the rows, sorry, will keep all the rows from the first table here. And we keep only the matching rows, matching rows from the, the second table. What does that mean? It means that here it keeps all the rows, okay? But in the second table, for example, Afghanistan. Afghanistan never organized the, the Olympic Games, okay? So Afghanistan exists in the second table, but doesn't exist in the first table, because here, of course, we only have the country that the countries that organized the Olympic Games. So Afghanistan, is in the second table and is not matching with a value in the first table. So this row will be removed. Okay. Um, for the same for Aden Iceland, the same for Albania, the same for Algeria, etc. etc. But here, uh, Greece, for example, Greece exists in the, the second table, but also exists in the first table. So we will keep the value Greece. And of course, we will add Europe here. If we do the right join, it's exactly the same, but uh, the opposite. It means that it will keep all the, 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 the countries, all the rows in the second table uh, and only the matching rows in the first table. So let's give you an example. Imagine that United States exists in the first table but not in the second. Imagine, <laughs> it's not the case, I think, but imagine. In this case, it will drop this row. So we won't have 19 for summer, St. Louis, United States anymore. Okay, it will drop this row because uh, we use a right join and because this value doesn't exist in the second table, we just drop it. Whereas it will keep all the rows from this table. And we also have the full join. The full join, it will keep all the rows from both tables. OK, uh, it matches, it doesn't matches, or it doesn't match. We don't care. It keeps all the rows. And finally, we have the inner. The inner, it only keeps the values that match in each table. So if a value exists here, but not here, it drops the, the, the row. If a value exists here, but not here, it drops the row. Okay. So at the end, we will obtain only the, 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 the rows that exists in both tables. As here, of course, we will, we will use the left join. Why? Because uh, we want to keep all the rows from the table geography because it's our interesting table. And here, we don't really care about Afghanistan, Albania, Algeria, etc. In our study, of course, because they didn't organize the Olympic Games. Okay. And here, Power BI tells me that 36 values in the first table matches and out of 51. So it means that 15 values here doesn't exist in the second table. So it will keep it but it will create uh, missing values in the column continent. Just to show you, OK, it added continent. I want only the, 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 yes, the column continent, OK? And you see Belgium, Europe, Australia, Oceania, et cetera, et cetera. But you see that at the end, all these values here are null values. Why? Why do we have new values uh, 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 here? It's because here you see United States. It means that for the United States, um, 
the United States exists in the first table, but not in the in the in the table named continents. Let's see why. I go here. Um, up, okay. Let's find the United States, and you see it's United States of America, and of course it's not the same. It's not matching. So we will just replace United States of America, replace values by United States. And if I do it, okay, if I come back to geography, you see now that all the United States, it, fo it found it and it put North America. And of course, we could do it also for United Kingdom, Russia, Yugoslavia, and South Korea. Okay, so here I, I show you something to add some information to your data thanks to a website. Perfect. So now that we have done it, I think we have it's it's finished for the for the ETL phase. So you see it took us uh, like maybe 45 minutes. It's mainly the the the, the, the longest phase of our um, of our, of the business intelligence process every time it's the ETL phase. Let's go. Do I want to apply the changes now? Of course, yes. I will ap apply my changes. And now what is happening? All the transformation that I applied will be loaded into Power BI. And I insist on the word loading, loading, load. Why? Because it means that um, the, the, the data that I took from Snowflake at the beginning, then transformed it in Power Query, are will be loaded into Power BI. It means that if now, now that it's loaded, if I um, uh, load my work in a Power BI file, okay, if I save everything in a Power BI file, all the data will be loaded in this file. It means that if I send you in the chat, in the, the YouTube chat, um, the, my, my Power BI file, you will be able to access to my data, whereas you don't have access to Snowflake, okay? Because the data are loaded into Power BI. Just to, to prove it, let's go to table view. You see here, now I have my table athlete, my table continent, geography, etc., etc. And it's very important that it's loaded because it means now that I'm not working anymore. I don't need Snowflake anymore because all everything is loaded into Power BI. And if I chose at the beginning, you remember the direct query mode, it won't be able to load the information, the data into Power BI desktop because it's lively connected, it's live connected to Snowflake. That's the difference. Here it's loaded because it made it made sorry a copy of Snowflake. Because I have the import mode. If I made the direct query mode, uh, we don't load it into Power BI. Now that we have done it, we'll go to the model view. Here is the model view. It's a bit ugly, but we will do it better just after. The model view, what do, we, what do you find here? You find um, all, all your tables, of course, and the relationship that you can find between your tables. For example, uh, between athletes and results, you see there is a relationship based on the athlete ID. Okay, thanks to the athlete ID, we can make a relationship between a result and an athlete. Okay, before going to the relationships, there are some tables here that we don't need. The first one, for example, is result football. Result football, a kind of reminder, all the information that we had in result football were was append to the table results. So we don't need this table anymore. Okay. Exactly the same for continents. All the, the interesting information from continents is already in the table geography, thanks to the merge. So let's go back to transform data. And we will tell to result football, right click, enable load, we will unlock it. It means that result football now still exists. It's important because result needs result football to exist, but won't be loaded into Power BI, okay? And exactly the same for continent, sorry. Enable load, I unlock it. Then I close it. I want to apply the changes. And you will see here the table result football and the table geography 
uh, sorry, the table result football and the table continents disappears. Okay, so now it's a bit it's a bit better. Okay, we have a model uh, that we can understand. So for the, this modeling part, I have several things to talk about. First of all, the relationships. So what is this relationship, for example? You see, if I go to, to it, um, Power BI understands that we can join the table athletes and the table results thanks to the athlete ID. Okay. Um, perfect. This relationship, if you see here, there is a one and here a star. The same here, star one, one star, etc. What is this one and what is this star? Um, the one here means that if I take an athlete ID, okay, randomly, this athlete ID on, only exists once in the table athlete, okay, because it's an ID. And the star here means that if I take randomly an athlete ID, this one could exist different times in the table results. It's, of course, it's also obvious because it means that an athlete can participate to several Olympic Games and win several medals, of course. Okay, That's why we have a one-star relationship here bet between athlete and results. Um, there, is a no, a no, there are two other types of relationships that exist. We also have the one-one relationship, one here, one here. It would mean that uh, an athlete ID exists only once in the table athlete, but also only once in the table results. So here it doesn't really make sense because it would say it would it would mean that an athlete could participate only once in one sport and in one Olympic Games to the uh, to the Olympic Games. Okay, so of course it's not the case here, but this type of relationship exists. Uh, imagine you have a, a table with the countries and a table with the capital, capital city. Of course, each capital city is related to one country, and each country uh, only has one capital city. So in this case, you would have uh, a relationship one one between between your two tables. If you have it, it's not a problem, okay. But in many times, it's it indicates that you should uh, merge your tables, okay, because it will improve the performance of the model. Uh, the the relationship that you, you want to avoid is the relationship star star. If you if you have a relationship star star, it means that you don't have unicity of athlete ID in the table results, but neither in the table athlete. In this case, it's impossible to 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 make a relationship between these two tables uh, um, perfectly because you don't know uh, if the athlete ID refers to this athlete ID or another athlete ID. Okay, you, you don't have unicity in your data. So when you create a, a model, the best thing to have is this relationship one star. Okay, and here is the case one star, one star, one star, one star. And you can see that uh, the star is on the table fact, and on the fact table, and the one is on the dimension tables. You can remind on this, results is our table, is our fact table. It means that in each row of this table, we have an interesting fact. This athlete during this Olympic Games in this sport obtained this medal. And then I want some more information on the athlete. I go to dimension table at that to have some more information. I want some more information on the Olympic Games. I go to the table geography where I have, I have the season, the country, the continent, the city, etc. Okay. So that was the first thing I want to, to talk about. And another thing is um, that the model that we have here, the schema that we have here is what we call a snowflake schema. What is a snowflake schema? It means that we have, at the center of the schema, we have the um, 
fact table, okay, results. This fact table has uh, a relationship with each dimension table. So results has a, a relationship with athlete, with sports, and with geography. And the dimension tables could have, can have relationship with sub-dimension table. Okay, and here is the case, you see, athlete has a relationship with the fact table, but also with another table named NOCT. Okay, and to answer the question uh, asked before, um, it was uh, Jose. Jose asked before if it was a good good idea to create another table named with only the countries. Okay, it's not a good idea in Power BI because this type of schema here is not the best for the performance of the model. Why? Because imagine here, I want to create a graph um, that counts the number of medal per team. Okay. If I do it, I will need to join results and athlete and then athlete to NOC team. So it's two joints. Okay. And for the performance, it's not, it's not perfect. The best schema for a Power BI uh, model is what we call the store schema. A store schema is a table, uh, the fact table uh, at the center of the schema. And each dimension table has one and only one relationship with the fact table. So sport here in the case, it has one and only one relationship with results. Geography is also the case, but athletes, it's not the case because athletes has a relationship with results, but also another rela relationship with NOC team. So here, to, to obtain a store schema, what we will do is we will take NOC team and merge it with athletes so, so that we don't have the table NOC team anymore. The information from NOC team will be into the table athlete. And in this case, we will obtain a, a store schema. Okay, so I go to transform data. Um, and geography, match queries. Um, here, NOC team and the relationship between these two. Uh, sorry, it, was, it wasn't geography. Sorry, it was uh, athlete. Sorry, so athlete, match queries. Here, NOC team, perfect. And we make this merge thanks to the NOC, perfect. Okay, now I want here the team. Okay, China, Netherlands, etc. And we don't uh, forget to unlock enable load here. Yes, exactly, Jose, we, we, we should, Every time you make a, a, a Power BI um, a model, the best is to have a store schema. It's not really a problem to have a Snowflake schema. It will work. But for the performance of your model, it's better to have a store schema like this. Perfect. Now let's go to the, to the last part, sorry, to the last part of the, of the, of the meeting is the creation now of the dashboard, OK? Because our data is ready, so we can now create the graphs. Um, so here you see you have the different columns that we can use. Okay. Imagine that you are a data analyst and they, are, they ask you to make a report with the data you have. Me, the first thing that I would check would be the results, okay, the results of, uh, of the different countries, uh, of the different games in different uh, in different uh, cities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so which athlete obtained uh, gold medals, which athlete athlete didn't obtain medals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But to have graphs using the the results, uh, it could be very interesting to have um, numerical values. Okay, because for the graphs, it's better to have to make some means, some averages, some some medians, some counts, sum, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But here in the table results, we don't have any um, um, numerical values. 
Okay, just to show you numerical values, we have you, the little sigma here because height is a numerical value, so you have the sigma. In results, we only have um, text, even games and medal are text. Okay, so it's quite a problem. That's why in Power BI, there is a way to create some calculations, uh, and that's what we will do here. So here on results, imagine I, I want to create a calculation that gives me the number of gold medals, the number of gold medals, OK? Uh, during your, since the beginning of the, of the, of the, of the Olympic Games, since, since 19, 1896, how many gold medals were given, OK? So for that, I will right click here on results, and we create new measure. A measure, it's a calculation, OK? The, na the name of the measure will be number of gold medals, OK? And this calculation will be done thanks to a language named DAX. So DAX, it's a, it's a code language, OK, uh, that we will use for the visualization. So maybe it's one of the most difficult parts of Power BI um, using the DAX language for your calculation. The DAX language, you don't need to know everything for the, from the DAX language, OK? The, the, the way to use it is that you, you know some of the functions, and then you use the documentation that is very, very good. I'll give you an example just to show you here. Calculate. DAX. So calculate is one of the functions from DAX. I have the documentation from Microsoft. And you see, calculate. Uh, OK, it's in French, sorry. But you can, of course, find it in English. English version, I, I am sure. Yeah, perfect. So calculate function, DAX. You see, you have the different parameters. So expression and filters. Um, you have also an, um, an example on, on how to use it, et cetera, et cetera. So of course, me and you, no, no one uh, knows every functions uh, of DAX, OK? The best way is that you know some functions. And if you need something, you just use the documentation to find the correct uh, function and to understand how to use it. So here, me, I want to calculate uh, the number of gold medals in the entire data set. So for that, I will use the function calculate. If there is only one function to know, it's this one, OK? Because it's it's the most used in Power BI. So you see, cal calculate, it enables me to evaluate an expression, an expression, sorry, in a context modified by filters. OK, doesn't really make sense for me, but let's, let's explain it. The expression I want to calculate is the number of gold uh, uh, is the number of medals okay so i want to count the number of medals so for that i will use the function count okay here power bi tells me that the function count takes as a parameter a name the name of a column okay me i want to count the number of medals so the name of the column would be medal okay but if i do only that here, I'm calculating counts of medal. So I'm just counting the number of medals. Whereas I have, I don't want the number of medals. I want the number of gold medals. That's why we want to add a filter. We will tell to, buy, to Power BI, don't count all the medals. Count only the medals where it's written gold. OK, so the filter is medal equal to gold. OK, and here you see I have my expression and here I have a filter. OK, so what will Power BI do? It will take only the rows where the medal is gold. And on this rows, it will count the number of medal. So at the end, we will obtain only the number of gold medals. Just to show you. Um, if I wanted the number of gold medals um, um, in the Olympic Games 1998, for example, I could add here another filter 
that say, don't count all the gold medals, but only the gold medals were uh, games, a uh, year, sorry, year, equals to 1998, 1998. And it would work, okay? So you see, I can add as much filters as I want in my calculate. Okay. Okay. Me, the objective wasn't to, to calculate that. So I just want the number of gold medals. Now that I have done it, I will prove you that it works. For that, uh, here in visualization, I will use the card. What is a card? It's maybe the most uh, easy to understand uh, graph. It's just a way to, um, to, to print a value. Okay. In this card, I will put my measure. I obtain 10K. It means that 10,000 gold medal were given uh, for the beginning of the Olympic Games. Okay? And now that I have done it, I can add some filter on my pages. Just to show you, I will use a slicer. A slicer, it's another visualization that enables you to put some filters. For example, if I want uh, to know by by Olympic Games, up. For example, now I I still have the number of gold medals uh, from the beginning of the of the Olympic Games. Okay. Now I want only the gold medals in uh, uh, 1998. Okay. If I click here, it changes the values here. Whereas I didn't change my calculation. My calculation is still the same, okay? But my value here, so my measure here, adapts to the filter that I have on my page, okay? And I, I can add, and I can add, sorry, another slicer on uh, uh, the team. Perfect. I want France, for example, because I'm French. Where is it? Here. If I add France, now it adapted uh, again. So I know that France in the, the um, Winter Olympic Games 1998 obtained only two medals. And of course, I can say um, also in 2004 and obtain 23 medals, uh, gold medals. Okay. So you see, you, you, you can see now the, the, the use of DAX language. It's very interesting because with only one calculation, you can understand how to have many, many different uh, information thanks to the filters. What is the difference between results and keep filters? Results and keep filters. What do you mean, uh, Jose? I don't understand your question. Results and keep filters. Results is a table. I don't really understand your question. Maybe you, you could uh, um, rephrase it. Index, yes, I, I understand that you mean index, but uh, keep filters. OK, so maybe I can show you. Indeed, you right. keep filters is um, uh, a keyword. OK, um, keep filter, it's a function um, that will ask to, buy, to, to Power BI to keep the same filters as in an expression, okay? And, but I, I don't see what result is. Result is not a, is not a function in Power BI. In a Power BI. Okay. Um, so, perfect, I wanted to, to show it to you. Now, maybe the last thing that we will see uh, is a graph that is very uh, interesting in Power BI and very used is the map. Field map here, for example, you see, I can show you, for example, in the map, all the, 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 the continents that organize the Olympic Games. So for that, let's go to con the geography, continent. And I have my map with all the continents that organize the Olympic Games. And as I told you, unfortunately, Africa is the only continent with Antarctic, Antarctica, 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 that uh, didn't organize the Olympic Games, okay? 
it's interesting, but it, it could be very interesting to have on the same map the, the, the continent and then to zoom on a continent and obtain the countries and then to zoom on a country and obtain the capital. So for that, if I add here in the location, I had the country and I add the city. So now if I go, for example, to continent to Europe, if I click on Europe, uh, sorry, I have to, to activate, thanks to this button, what we call the drill down. So I activate the drill down. If I click on Europe, it will zoom on Europe. It takes a, a bit of time. Up, oh, It zooms on Europe and ind indicates me all the countries in Europe that organized the Olympic Games. Then, uh, for example, France. Let's click on France. And it will give me all the cities in France that organized the Olympic Games. So you can find Paris, Grenoble, etc., et Chamonix, etc., etc. Okay. Uh, but the best way to do it, you see here to do this, I cheated a bit because I take a two continent, then country, then city. Okay. If you have to do it in many different um, uh, maps, it could be it could take a, a bit of time. So. There is a way to do it on Power BI. Um, you see, continent, city, uh, sorry, sorry, continent, country, city are uh, hierarchical, hierarchical. I don't know how to say it. There is a hierarchy between these uh, three variables. Okay, in a continent, you find a country. In a country, you find a city. In etc. etc. Okay, there is the hierarchy. When you have this type of, vari of variables, okay, you, you can also find it with the dates. In a year, you find a month. In a month, you find a, a week. In a, in a week, etc., etc. When you have this type of, of hierarchy, there is a, an object on the, on Power BI named a hierarchy that you will create. So, for example, continent, more options, uh, create hierarchy, okay. And in my continent hierarchy, I will add the country and I will add the city. And now, if I come back to my um, to this, if I come back here, whereas I don't need to put continent, country, city, I will just put my continent hierarchy. And in this way, I could do what I did before, clicking on Australia, on the Oceania, Australia, etc., etc. Is there any questions on this part's uh, visualization? Just to show you before the question um, come that we, we can custom then our, our graphs, of course. Imagine here, I want to, uh, it's interesting here to have the um, the countries and the continent that organized the Olympic Games, but we don't have information on which continent or which country organized the most. Okay, we don't know if Australia organized more than uh, uh, um, America, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there is a way to do it. We can go to field colors, okay, and we could say it, it could be great to have. Um, dark colors for countries that organized uh, many times the Olympic Games and light colors for countries that organized a few times the Olympic Games. So for that, in colors, you can change the color, of course, but you can also use FX here, named the conditional formatting. It means that the, 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 the colors will be uh, submitted to condition. Okay, and what is the, what will be the condition? It will be the number of of Olympic Games organized. So for that, I will go here to gradient. Okay, it will be a gradient of color. You see this type of gradient here. The 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 continent or countries or cities that organized the most here. The continent countries or cities that organized uh, only once the Olympic Games. Um, summarization counts perfect. Uh, here it will be count of continent hierarchy. Let's go and we will see what it, it, it does. Oh, it didn't work. Sorry. What did I do? Um, mm -mm. Geography. Continent hierarchy. Perfect. Yes. 
Oh, so, sorry, it's a count here. Perfect. And you see, the continent that organized the most is the Europe. Then in the Europe, the country that organized the most is France. And then in France, I think Paris organized only once. Okay, each, each city organized um, the same number of times. Oh no, Paris, maybe twice. And third, the third time in 2024. Mahmoud, can we add the number of times the NP game based on each city on the map? I think I, I answered your question just before you asked it. Perfect. Oh no, maybe the question is the you want the values. So so here two, three, etc. So maybe there is a way to do it. Um I would try to find it maybe in map settings. No, not in map settings. Legends. Uh, no legends. Okay, you want the number of times. Hmm. It's not sure that we can do it. Uh, you, you could create a tooltip. Um, visual border shadow. When you need this type of, uh, when, you, when you want to add some parameters, it's in format visual. And you can see here the different, uh, the different, uh, way to do it. Indeed, Jose, as I, as I said, yes, you can use the tooltip. So what is a tooltip? A tooltip, you see when I when I go on the, on the, on the value here, it, um, it creates continent Europe, country France, city Paris, okay? This is what we call a tooltip, okay? This tooltip can be changed. We can choose the value to add on this tooltip. So Mahmoud, you could t say that on this tooltip, you uh you you uh, how to say it you print the number of times each city country or, or continent organized the olympic games perfect so thank you everybody for your attendance to this uh to this um introduction to pro bi of course it was an introduction i i, I couldn't go so far but i hope it was interesting and uh, if you are interested on this uh, on this tool, remember that in in uh, data centers we have some some um, some uh, training on Power BI. We have a three days and a five days training on this tool. So if you're interested, uh, feel free to 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 go to the website and find the information to to go to this training. Thank you everybody for your attendance and have a good weekend. Goodbye.